times in Scripture. While God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appears 25 times, many times the promises that Israel was to receive, they were linked to their fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. At other times, when Israel was stubborn and would not do right, God would say, I'm going to give it to you, but not for your sakes, but for your father's sakes. You see, the preceding generation preserved the promises. And I want to preach to my generation. We are not here because of what we have done. We are here because of what preceding generations have done. We are experiencing God because of what they did and the prayers they prayed. And don't ever say that they, what they did was in vain. Honey, we would not be half the men or women had it not been for some old timers who prayed all night and who fasted until God came through. Give us insight. Give us identity. And give us impartation. Because without these three, we will never make it as a people and as the next generation upon whom the ends of the world have come. If we depend upon our ingenuity and our ability, we will fall short. But if we will let the preceding generation lay their hands on us and impart to us insight, identity, and impartation, we will make it. Let me preach to you. Insight, by definition, is a powerful word. It is defined as immediate and clear understanding that takes place without recourse to overt trial and error behavior. My generation needs immediate and clear understanding because it's trying to make life happen successfully by trial and error. I slept with one girl and that didn't bring satisfaction. I took one drug and that didn't work. I tried Buddha, Muhammad, Shiva, and I guess I'll try Jesus by trial and by error. They are trying to find success. Mother who loves their child more than enough to let them know about God, about life, and about how life ought to relate back to God. That's what insight is. About God, about life, and how life ought to relate back to God. That's what insight is. And when you wrap your arm around your child, that's what you're giving them. Whenever you begin to give them, hey man, life lessons. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Insight can happen at almost any time in the day. But it generally happens at inconspicuous moments when life lessons can be grasped from dad's instructions. For instance, whenever dad way back when, and I don't want to remember too good, he, I forgot to put the plug in the boat. You can't go fishing without a plug to keep the water out of the boat. It just doesn't happen. But I forgot the plug. So Dad gets there, and here we are. believe the preacher when all week long they've had something that was confrontational and that was uh, anti what the preacher say pumped into their brain and then the parent says well you need to do this and they say I don't think so I heard it something else kids grow up to form their own opinions so if we do not allow God to give us wisdom and insight to pump it into them hey man I'm telling you kids will believe what you tell them because God made it that way God gave us a window of time that they will believe anything you tell them. But if you tell them what is right, whenever they grow up, they will not believe what is wrong. It's, it's not, you can't look at it while you're brainwashing them. Somebody's going to brainwash them. But we might as well brainwash them with the truth and wash them with the blood, amen, rather than some other kook pouring junk in their mind. Thank you, Brother Matt. Thank God. Amen. I appreciate the zeal of our youth.
Parents must give their children a vision of what they can become in God. I don't believe it's given to us to define their calling in life. But we can by example and by voice speak to their future and give it direction. We can give children room to explore the possibilities for their life, but within the parameters of a godly vision. My dad did not choose my vocation for me. He did not tell me, boy, one day you're going to grow up and be a preacher. If he did, I might have said, nope, I'm not. I want to grow up and do something different. Kids are just like that. You tell them you're going to do this, they go, nope, I'm not. So my mom used to say, you're not going to do this. You're not going to eat your food. Oh, yes, I am. Reverse psychology. And so that's why I haven't missed many meals since then. You see, he didn't tell me one day I'd become a preacher. He did, however, communicate to me that living for God was the right thing to do. Living for God then became the vision that framed my life. And what, what I would do in my life while I was living for God was my choice. Be it a doctor, a lawyer, a banker, a business executive, I knew that whatever I did, I would live for God. I chose to do what God called me to do to preach. But my vocation was contained within the vision that my pastor parents spoke into my life. My vocation was can each animal distinction when he named the animals. And the principle remains true. God gave the man the awesome responsibility of directing a kid's identity. I want us to clap our hands and thank God for that wonderful revelation. But now the question comes, ladies and gentlemen, when does a boy become a man? When does a girl become a woman? When they get a cell phone, a credit card, a first car, a first personal bill from a company? When do they transition? America has nothing of significance to mark when a boy becomes a man. But a tribe, and I cannot remember the name, in the deep regions of Africa, marks the passing of a boy from boyhood to manhood by taking him out and forming a circle around him, cutting deep lines in his face and chanting at him and treating him roughly. But from that point on, he doesn't stay at Mama's house. He can now provide. He can now marry. He can now fight. And though it is traumatic and harsh, it is definitive. He knows I am no longer a boy. I am now a man. And you see, our world is watching men and women who never noticed the marker that announced they had entered into adulthood. And their actions are reflecting their ignorance. I'm going back to a second childhood. I'm going to go do things I never got to do when I was little. Honey, whenever you enter into adulthood, you grow up. And Paul said, when I was a child, I went to a man and I put away childish things. God has got to get a hold of this generation. It's not a church problem. It is a generational problem. It is a culture problem that has got to be corrected by 